several people have asked me how it is I actually convert these tubs into front opening ball python enclosures. So today I'm going to show you how I do that. Now for our supplies, besides the tub itself, what we're going to need is three hinges, one chunk of acrylic that's already been cut to size, I've got one just a long sort of bar, something to use to score a straight edge, regular pocket knife, regular box cutter, metallic sharpie, or something that can actually mark onto the black. I got these little kind of the command hook sort of itty bitty version. Um, these are two cup hooks that have been bent into an S shape. That'll make sense later. I've got Gorilla Glue, the super glue gel version. Good stuff. Uh, five zip ties and that is it. That's all it takes to build these enclosures. Now I've already, because I wasn't thinking about the video at first, but I've already glued hinges onto the acrylic side and we are going to fasten these to the tub itself. So let's get started. Okay, so I've set my stuff aside here and what we're going to do is turn this over on its side. Mind you, this setup is based on using a tub like this. Um, including the raised sides. The entire design is actually based on that. So what we're going to do is take our box cutter and our straight edge. We're going to hold that like this and just along the side make scoring marks going across. This actually works because I've already measured and this is this just happens to be the right size. It just worked out that way. I didn't mean for it to happen that way. Um, it would have been cool if I did though. Uh, so we're going to cut along that here, the raised edge only. Along the sides like this. And we're going to go across the bottom of the raised edge only until we've got basically like the that shape <laughs> happening. So then we take our straight edge and we tuck it right here and we go along the bottom edge with our thing here. And what we're doing is we're scoring. We're just gently multiple times doing this for several reasons uh, for one if you just try to stab it and drag it across that's not gonna work um, if you use a dremel or something like that the plastic will melt and it'll be quite uneven another thing is that scoring it will create multiple multiple edges basically so it makes it smoother than if it were just one sharp edge. Um, let's see what else. Uh, on the top side here, we're not going to go across using it this way like we would on the two sides here. And the reason why is we're going to drop that down about a quarter of an inch. We're going to drop it down and then score it until you have something that looks like this. I've already cut this side just to save time in the video. This little edge here is dropped down just enough to catch the door actually is what it's what it's for. So the next step is I've already done the hard part. Now this is the easy, easy stuff. Um, these hinges are already glued on, so we're we're good with the glue. We're done with the glue. Um, if you have a look, 
the door is actually, I have my door to fit just a little bit wider. Um, it'll be a little more visible once the backing comes off of this. Uh, so what we do is we set that down, we grab our Sharpie, and you mark your holes. Mark your holes, where the holes are going to go for the hinges. You want to line this up, get it right up under this edge here. We're going to put it right up under this edge here and resting on that center piece that we dropped down just a little bit. Now that's actually there to rest the door, the center of the door. The sides are actually rested along the edge because as you can see, this is straight, whereas these are curved. That's, what is that, a trapezoid, whatever it's called. So we mark our edges, which I've already done. And then we take our pocket knife, and the reason why I'm using this is because it's a lot stronger, a lot sharper. Get this out of the way. Supporting the bottom. <laughs> Be very careful not to stab yourself. I've done it several times. So supporting the bottom. This plastic, believe it or not, is actually relatively easy to do this, to cut through and to make the little holes here. So we're just, I put two instead of the three. The two outside edges, as you can see, it's actually three holes, but I'm only using the outside edges. And you'll see why in a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and Put these little holes in here that are obviously measured to the hinges that's already glued onto the acrylic door. We're going to do this gently but firmly to get nice even size holes. And I'm using a finger on either side of the blade to actually support the plastic so that I'm not pushing so hard that it cracks underneath where the blade is twisting here so we're doing that you see how easy that is it happens very quickly once you get that initial hole in there and we don't want them to be too big just big enough a little bit bigger than the hinges on the door And because that actually creates a little um, kind of raised up cone on the inside here, what I do is I take my box cutter and I just graze it along. To smooth out that inside edge and to cut off any excess. This makes the next step quite easy. So we take this. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and get this off, which is so satisfying, but yet frustrating because it's so sticky. And hallelujah for having nails or else I'll never be able to get this. off in one piece. Okay, so we're going to take that. We want our hinges on the outside. I should probably have mentioned that the orientation of the hinge makes a difference. We want it facing outward this way. So go ahead and put that there with our hinges. And we're going to get our zip ties. We have our five zip ties. We only need three of them. 
right now. And I am shedding all over myself. Then we take, no, we should probably set this aside. Take it and bring it in on one end. Let it rest. Doesn't matter which way you decide to do it. I'm a little OCD, so I like having everything on the right sides here. And we're gonna drive it right through the corresponding hinge hole. Oh, one of them fell. Of course it did. And then we're gonna go through the other hole like so. Now this might actually seem like it's not sturdy enough, but let me tell you, I have actually tried it using, I dropped one in here, I tried using it with, or, or building it with screws, and the screws are not like still enough like they it has way too much give in the plastic so I had to figure out another way to fasten the hinges without using glue because not all glues will glue to this material very well believe it or not so instead we're using the hinge I mean the, the zip tie so trying to get this here it's actually a very easy process. I'm just kind of clumsy and I'm also doing it in a way that you guys can see. So it makes it a little, a little more laborious for me, which is fine because I really wanted to share this with you guys and show you guys how I do this since so many people seem interested. So. I'm going to get those nice and tight, nice and tight, and then you take your box cutter and cut off your excess. You can use scissors, you can use nail clippers, it really doesn't matter as long as it gets the job done. Now you have a door and the door is very sturdy, I guarantee it. As long as you pull that zip tie nice and tight. So perfect hinge action. There's no wobble. I mean, there's wobble in the actual, cause I used, what did I use? I used eight, one eighth inch acrylic um that's really all you need the plastic itself is just a little bit thinner than that so there we have it then you take your s hooks and right on the very edge here in the corner of the top that's where your locks are going to be these are your locks so what I'm going to do, because remember we said screws are not as stable for hinges. This is obviously a screw. So we're going to improvise. We're going to start the hole here with our knife, one on each side. Try to get it as even as possible. Just enough to get that started there. And then we screw in our little hooks here. And it is in fact that easy. All right. 
Now, the remaining, this is, this is going to seem weird. The remaining two zip ties. We only need the head of the zip tie. If you take a look at that, it's got a little hole. Okay, we're going to take that and we're just going to cut that little piece off. Just that little piece. We can discard this. We only need the head. Sorry, I didn't want to do that part with the uh, box cutter because that's how I cut myself all the time. Okay, so we're going to take that and using the wider edge, we're going to use it to screw into the back of the screw that we're using for locks. Not only does it make it sturdier, but it also covers the sharp edge. And I don't like to use a grinder to, to grind off the corners. See, that's actually too tight now. I can't. Okay. I don't like to use an angle grinder or a Dremel for the corners um, or for the pointed edges because we want to use these because th it makes it more sturdy. Much sturdier. Okay. And I screw it in until I start to feel a very tiny little poke where it's coming out. And believe it or not, that is it. That, that's it. That's all it is. You now have a front opening tub enclosure that keeps perfect humidity for your ball pythons. Now I'm going to get up closer here because to show you this here, that edge, that's your ventilation strip. You have your ventilation strip. The hooks, these are your locks. If you want it tight, tighter, you just give it another, another go. That, those are your locks. That's not going anywhere unless you move it. Now, if you use glass instead of acrylic, then you don't have to worry about any sort of lifting right here. But I have been using these and I have put my escape artists in here and they have not been able to escape. And I have some gifted escape artists. This edge here is quite tight. I can barely stick my finger in there. Look at that. That's, that's not lifting. It's not going anywhere. That is not for escape. This same thing, this strip right here is reinforced by these little support things here so this has like no give that they're not going to stretch that open these are super tight as long as you keep those really really tight let's see to open this i mean And it's still just perfect. So as a finishing touch, what I like to do is get this little thing here, and peel off the backing, and then just stick it to the, the center right there. And that'll be my little knob so that I don't get my grubby fingerprints all over everything okay. 
And that's that. And there it is. Front opening enclosure. Didn't take all day. Doesn't even take an hour, maybe 20 minutes tops. And you've got a perfect ball python enclosure. This particular size, I mean, is, is fantastic. I can show you what an adult looks like in here. Okay, so I have it open with light in the coming through the back just so that it could be seen. Um, there is a adult female. That's Miss Terry. My little mystery girl. Can't tell what morph she is. It's very confusing. The yellow light is just because I have a flashlight up there. There is no light set up for this enclosure yet. Um, I'll probably just use Christmas lights because they're nice and dim and use less power than an actual basking light. Um, they get plenty of natural light through the windows here in the reptile room. I've got the overhead light off so it's a little bit dark but I did that so that it could be seen inside of here. If I turn the light on you won't be able to see. But that's an adult female, and she is digging her ball python enclosure. So that's how we get that done, and I'm glad I was able to film it so that everyone can see, and hopefully it's helpful and you guys are able to build your own. Feel free to send me any questions, minionmuseum at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.